The fission source of neutrons, S sub F, into an energy E coming from an incident neutron with energy E prime is the product of three parameters. The number of neutrons born per fission, nu, the fission rate, the mac which is the macroscopic fission cross-section of the incident neutron multiplied by the flux of the incident neutrons, uh, the scalar flux of the incident neutrons, and the probability that a neutron happens to be born with a particular energy, chi of E. So that, therefore, the source of fission neutrons that take an incident neutron of energy E prime to an exiting energy E is given by chi of E times nu times the macroscopic fission cross-section times the scalar flux. We can expand this expression to reobtain the angular flux by simply integrating over all incident neutron angles, omega prime. Therefore, the sources of fission neutrons S sub F as a function of position E prime E and T is equal to chi of E times nu times the macroscopic fission cross-section as a function of E prime times the integral over all omega prime of the angular flux of, as a function of position, the incident neutron energy, the incident neutron direction, and time. So to obtain the fission source just as a function of the exiting energy E, we must integrate over all the incident neutron energies E prime. Therefore we see S sub F is now equal to chi of E nu times the integral over from zero to infinity with respect to DE of the macroscopic fission cross-section multiplied by the integral of the angular flux over all angles. Fission neutrons are isotropic so that we know that the above expression is the same as if it were a function of the exiting angle, omega. So in this expression, the only thing that changes is that the left-hand side is now a function of omega hat. Therefore, the neutron transport equation in terms of the angular flux, including all of the source terms we've described, is this fun expression seen here, where every term we've discussed in detail. This version of the neutron transport equation can be expanded to include delayed neutrons, which, which follows pretty much exactly the same as the derivation of the point kinetic equations where we have a certain number of delayed neutron groups. However, we won't be doing that here. Additionally, we can set the left-hand side of this expression to zero to obtain the time-independent transport equation. Many neutron transport codes operate in this manner.